Hi, good evening. Uh, this is your friend Hand here, and it is great to see you here tonight. And tonight I'm very, very excited uh, for a couple reasons. By the way, happy Labor Day, and hopefully you guys have a great, great time. Uh, please do not drink and drive at the same time. Be safe, and uh, you know, have a great time with your family. And tonight I'm very excited because I'm getting to do a tool that I think is missing from all keyword research programs, and that is a tool that help you organize keywords after. Uh, you know the keyword research, uh, the keyword too that spelled out thousands of maybe ten thousand keywords at the time. What the heck are you gonna do with them? How are you gonna organize them? How are you quickly gonna sort to the junk keywords versus the the, the the keywords that you really want to focus, spend your money and target on? Whether you're being a PPC marketer, SEO marketer, program mar uh, a product creator, and affiliate marketer, uh, you know you got that headache, right? I mean. And then all you know, just you know, all the keyword two out there, you know, they they're doing an excellent job to come out, grab scraping all the you know keyword two out of Google and give it out. But sometimes it, it's it's just really a mess. I mean, the traditional way is using using Excel. Even that, if you're a technical challenge, you don't know how to use it, advanced Excel sheets. It's just just huge huge frustrations, right? So well, that problem is gonna solve by using this awesome software and please let me introduce to you and the name of the uh, software is called the Keyword Organizer. So as the as the name implies, it is a, a, a Keyword Organizer uh, tool for Windows and you're going to see how simple and easy this thing uh, is to use for a lot of reasons. For example, you'll filter out negative keywords automatically for you. Uh, you will, um, you know, filter out by your criteria and get everything organized. That you that you can even upload straight from the software to WordPress. Okay, as you kind of go into the, uh, as you find out the keywords, start writing your articles, reviews, blog posts. You can you can just go straight from the software, uh, check out the keywords you've been written in there, and automatic upload. I think you're gonna absolutely love it. Just stay tuned, watching the demo video right after the interview. Um, right after the interview. Um, you're gonna know exactly how easy and simple this thing gonna uh, uh, help you especially gonna help you save tons tons time and money trying to get those keywords and what the next thing I'm very excited about is I get Mark Thompson uh, with us again to talk about a lot of keyword researching tips uh, and specifically about this product as well so get very very excited and let's kind of uh, watch this interview uh, enjoy it and until next time, just your friend hand, and I'll be and um, keep smiling, and I'll be talking to you soon. Cheers. Hi, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is your friend Han again, and it is great to see you here. Uh, today, I'm I'm very excited to have Mark Thomason back with us again, and uh, he's going to be here share some uh, keyword research tips with us. How he um, personally uh, go about doing his own SEO and PPC camping, how to get all the keywords organized and get ready for the campaign stuff. So and, and at the end of this interview, he's going to share uh, this awesome great tool. Uh, he and his partner came out. Uh, it's going to make your uh, keyword research uh, more organized, uh, Take kind of take it to the next level because there's no other tool like this in the marketplace right now because uh, the t typical keyword uh, research tools are just you know pumping up data, but you know without organization, it really has no meaning to you. So uh, he's gonna go into more depth in this interview uh, and talk about how can you uh, really use this to benefit your marketing and SEO, either being SEO effort, offline client effort, or uh, you know pay advertising, PPC stuff. So get very very excited and get ready to take some lots lots of notes. I'll learn from Mark uh, here, and uh, before we get into the uh, uh, you know all, the, all all kinds of awesome stuff here. Let's kind of learn how Mark starting with the internet marketing and specifically what did he do to achieve a level of success he has today. I know he has done this several times, uh, but just for those who doesn't know Mark yet, let's kind of Mark can kind of quickly run out maybe quick one with us today. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for having me again, Han. Um, just really briefly, I'll try to to talk about my background and how it relates to um, keyword organizer and so. I've, I've been an internet marketer for eight, eight or nine years now and I started doing um, off offline marketing campaigns, uh, managing SEO and pay-per-click and social media campaigns and um, one, of the, one of the problems that I always had with my clients was being able to show them something that was tangible, that was organized in terms of keyword research, 
something that was more organized that they could understand. Because you know, there's great keyword um, research tools out there, like you know, um, Google Keyword Tool, Market Samurai, Longtail Pro. There's lots of them out there, but what it it doesn't do a good job of filtering and organizing that data. And so I was having a, a tough time with um, managing my clients and saying, hey, you know, these are the keywords we need to go after. Here is why, you know, and and, and try to find um, closely grouped or themed keywords. And these were, and this is what I was trying to do for my SEO clients. Mm-hmm. And so, um, one of the reasons why the keyword organizer is so unique is because we're able to take all of that data and we're able to filter it and organize it in a way that's easy for you to understand, easy for clients to understand. And so I've been using um, this tool for a while now, but it's been kind of under the radar for a number of years. And so when I started out, I was doing a lot of offline marketing campaigns, um, and then I transitioned that over to doing more online stuff. So I've done a lot more product creation, uh, affiliate marketing, and I will say that Keyword Organizer has been a great, um, has had a big impact on my online marketing as um, compared to offline marketing, because you can use it so many different ways, because as you know, keyword research impacts not only SEO, but it impacts pay-per-click, affiliate marketing, if you build out niche sites, if you're looking for a hot product to create, um, there's just so many different applications to use it. So I, to make a long story short, I started in offline managing a lot of SEO campaigns, um, and then I started to do more online campaigns You know, over the last two or three years. And, and then you kind of involved to do a lot of product launch too, right? Yeah, I've done a lot of product launches, a lot of software um, in particular. We've done a little bit of training, but mainly software, a lot of WordPress plugins and themes, and a lot of our ideas just just kind of spawn off of uh, everyday situations, just certain pains and, and problems that we have in our business. And um, you know, we've noticed you know we'll do some additional research, and we've noticed that a lot of other people are having the same issues, so we, we'll build out software. And so Keyword Organizer was kind of one of those products that you know we noticed that. There was a lot of great research tools out there, but there wasn't anything that can help you organize it and manipulate it in a way that can directly correlate with like your content strategy. And so that that's kind of how Keyword Organizer was born. So let, let's talk about um, absolutely the, the the right way for those who just come to internet marketing, maybe just start with either uh, SEO or you know doing PPC campaign. What is the right way to find that? That um, I guess what we call the sweet spots that you want to really focus on. Uh, I know for different people there's different criteria, but can you just talk in general what maybe some of the criteria you going to when you kind of going going to a niche? Hey, this is a evergreen market I want to go into, but these are the keywords I want to start out with, and maybe I get better at this. I'm, I'm gonna start out, you know, going to another group of key sets of keywords. Can you can just quickly. Walk, walk us to a, some kind of you know mindset or, or process you're going to while you are uh, doing keyword research. <clears throat> sure. Well, I mean, there's a few different strategies. I mean, there's there's kind of uh, going after the low hanging fruit type keywords, the the, the long tail keywords that don't have a lot of competition, um, but don't they may not have a ton of search volume. So you know, it's it's about finding that sweet spot between um, competition and people searching it, and and you know. Um, uh, search engine uh, volume. Okay, so it, it depends on what type of resources you have. Like if you've been if you've been doing SEO for a while, you kind of you have a better understanding of what what you need to do to rank well in the search engines. And so that includes writing content, that includes doing backlinks, that includes doing on-page optimization. All of those things are part of the algorithm and whether you can rank above your competitors or not. Because really. It, it's all about being able to rank on the first page, right? Because if you can't rank on the first page, you're not going to be able to get, um, you know, a significant amount of traffic. Right. And so, so when you're first starting out, I think it's important that you start with those longer tail keywords that maybe don't have a ton of search volume. So maybe you know, there's a thousand people searching it every month, but there's not a lot of competition. So you can build um, a very, very targeted niche site around that particular phrase or product. And you can get it to rank very quickly, even without a lot of content and a lot of backlinks. But then there's, you know, more the the evergreen niche, like you talk about, that's more of a, of a larger, um, you know, niche that like something like SEO software or you know whatever it may be, uh, that's a little bit more broad. There's going to be a lot more competition, so it's going to take a lot more of your time, a lot more resources, um, and a lot more patience to get up to the first page of of Google. So. 
when you're first starting out, it's important to try to keep things uh, very targeted because it's going to be a lot easier to rank for those terms. And as you start to build sites that start to make you more and more money, then you can start to go after some of the larger niches that, you know, where you have uh, maybe uh, virtual assistants working for you who are building backlinks and writing content on a regular basis, um, everything that you need to kind of be in a more competitive space. So, um, so in, uh, to sum it up, like if someone just starting out, they should go after more uh, um, long, long tail keywords than something that's too, too general because it's too hard to rank for. And maybe they don't have it probably the time or the money or the, the, the effort, right? Right. I mean, you know, Google is looking at authority. I mean, their their algorithm is is really based off of authority now. So they're looking for sites that have been around for a while that have a ton of authority backlinks, great unique content. So I mean, it, it, it's almost impossible to be a new player in that space and all of a sudden get that type of authority that other sites have taken you know five or ten years to build up. So it's almost impossible just to you know go into a new space with absolutely nothing under your belt and into rank you know ahead of them that, that totally makes sense so what what are the biggest mistakes that that you see people are making when it comes to uh, keyword research uh, um, and, and then some of the mistakes you, you know maybe they just totally going after wrong keywords from the beginning and uh, unfortunately learn at the very end uh, it's not making money for them can you talk a little bit on, on that sense yeah sure I mean well the biggest one I see is people going after just too broad of, of keywords. Well, actually, it, it's it's a double-edged sword. I see people who go after too broad of keywords that are, they're just never going to be able to rank for it, okay. or the, the complete opposite, where they go after such a targeted keyword that nobody is searching for it, <laughs> and they they may be able to rank for it, but but no one no one's searching for it, so they're not going to get any traffic. So it's it's it is kind of finding that balance, and it does take a little bit of practice to to really find the sweet spot between, like I said before, trying to find something that has low competition, but there's still a need and a demand for that particular product or service that you're ultimately trying to sell to make money. So uh, I guess a, a good, what, what is a good indicator? Just, uh, I know you can't do 100%, but what, what, when you look at a pile of keywords, how do you know that one um, is going to, you know, likely going to make, make some money and, and it's rentable? What, what, what do you... When you look at a glance, how do you know which Google uh, keyword you should go after? Well, um, I, I think uh, it, it depends. So if I'm building out a niche site, like say that I, I want to um, sell a product on that's that's on Amazon, and I want to make money as an affiliate selling that product, what I try to do is find a product that has buyer intent. So okay. people searching for the like maybe reviews for the product, or they're looking for you know buy whatever the product is. Those people we know are have already done some research or are looking to do research to ultimately buy that product. And so if I can get my, my site in front of them and, and write a good review on the product, there's a good chance that they'll click on my link and go and purchase the product and I'll earn commission off of it. Um, in terms of what type of, key, of um, search volume, I try to find keywords that at a minimum about a thousand um, searches each month. Um, and usually I try to find something between 5,000 and 8,000. That's probably my sweet spot. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily go after just one keyword. I'll go after uh, a, a close group of, of keywords. So, you know, if I'm going after, you know, like the, like a, a Dell 8700 computer, whatever it may be, I'll try to go after that, that keyword, Dell 8700, but then I'll also go after Dell 8700 review by Dell 8700. So everything is very um, closely themed from that root keyword that I'm targeting. Okay, so um, it's it's actually very uh, very smart doing group keywords. If you can't target the big keywords, uh, it's actually uh, if you can add up the traffic, uh, say one keywords, a general keyword of ten thousand views, you can just take you know five different little keywords, more targeted keywords who has two thousand. Uh, traffic, you all adds out to be the same, and you get a more brighter audience anyway. So that's pretty yep, smart. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and uh, let's talk about what do you see in, in your opinion? What what are the um, um, for the lack of a better words uh, what, uh, with the current different type of keyword research tools? What are they all kind of lacking uh, when 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 it comes to gather data for the keyword and take some meaning and, and make your life easier to determine? which pile of keyword to go after. 
well so I, I look at it in different steps like the first step is generating that long list of keywords right so just like getting getting you know thousands of keywords just just to kind of get things going get brains get some ideas going um, but then from there you need to be able to organize it in a way that it's going to help your SEO efforts because like when you're when you're doing SEO you want to create you know closely um, targeted blog posts around a particular phrase or if you're doing a pay-per-click campaign you want to build out your your campaigns in a way that are very structured so that you um, minimize the cost that you're paying per click. Um, and so that, that's where the keyword tools are lacking. They, they'll they spit out a lot of data, but there's no way to filter it, group it, and then create um, a strategy around it. And so that's that's really the, the what the core of Keyword Organizer does. You can use any keyword research tool that you want, take all of that data, put it in the Keyword Organizer, and then from there, it's so much easier to manipulate the data in terms of filtering it. You know, maybe you're trying to find, um, maybe you're doing a, a pay-per-click campaign. You want to find all the keywords in that, in that, you know, those 5,000 keywords that are under a dollar. Okay, so you can filter it under a dollar, export that, and then, um, or you could actually group those into in, into different campaigns or different groups, and then export that, and then you can build out your your pay-per-click campaign around what you've already manipulated. Or if you're doing, say you're doing an SEO campaign, you want to find keywords that are, you know, within 500 and 1500 um, exact monthly searches. Okay, you take those groups, you can um, you can regroup them, you can move, you can manipulate them, you can add negative keywords. So if there's certain keywords you do not want in your group, you can add those and they'll never show up. And then you can um, create content right from within the software around those those knit uh, those tightly knit uh, keywords and so the tool will make sure that you utilize each of those different uh, derivatives of the keyword in your content and then you can go and export it directly into um, WordPress or just copy the HTML and, and put it into your your um, your CMS right um, so and uh, can you also talk about some of the application you can use this uh, keyword organized tool like other than you know typical just doing SEO WordPress kind of stuff what, what are the other application uh, you can use this for um, well I mean obviously the, the biggest one's gonna be SEO um, the second biggest is probably gonna be pay-per-click uh, a few other ways you can use it are like just for creating products trying to find you know what what are people searching for in um, in that particular niche, and and make sure that there are people that that actually want what you want. And if like when I when I do product research, <coughs> excuse me, uh, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> I try to find I, I I make it the complete opposite of SEO. So like with SEO, you're trying to find low competition, you know, maybe search volume that is not ex extremely high. But with product with product creation, I try to find competitive, um, highly searched terms that have high cost per click because I know that those products are in demand so I'll use I'll use it in that way in that sense when I'm when I'm looking to create products the other thing that I, I use it for is when I'm creating content for my product so if I'm creating like a training course on something I'll try to find what people are searching for and I'll, I'll create content around what people are searching for because I know if, if there's a lot of people searching that then they probably want some training on it as well, and so it, it helps me to create kind of a curriculum for all of my training products as well. Yeah, so I think it, you know, it, 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 you know, in in the computer turning something called garbage in and garbaging out. So I think you know, you, yes, you, it's great you have you know market summary, you have all kinds you know all kinds of keyword research tools, uh, you know, a long list of them. But you know, if you can't really organize them, then that that data has no meaning to you. Uh, it, it, it's right. It's a you know when you have a keyword organizer like this, you know you, you have this filter feature. So you know exactly, hey, uh, uh, you know you want to filter for that. You can quickly talk it down to that sweet keywords that you want it, and, and you know look at you know like you say you can using you know reverse way to because for different purposes. So uh, and I, I think this is really one of the key elements that everyone's kind of missing uh, when it comes to. Uh, gather all kinds of awesome, awesome keywords um, for their marketing efforts, um, whether it be SEO, you know, offline with PPC or creating products. So let's kind of, <clears throat> kind of, go into more depth about this product. Let's gonna talk about the name of the product and the 
uh, time to launch and what the price range is and what exactly they're gonna get from the uh, front end offer. <clears throat> sure. Well, I mean, it, it's called Keyword Organizer. Um, just so you know, it the software is um, it's a Windows based, uh, PC based uh, software. So if you do have Mac. Um, you can still install it, but you need to have like the emulator software to to do it. So um, it's it's unfortunate. But the reason that it was built on um, Windows base was because you'll notice that Adobe Air applications or Mac programs they take forever. If you're trying to work with a lot of data, it's very it's extremely slow. Like if you've ever tried to work with Market Samurai and thousands of keywords, it is extremely slow. And so with the, the the Windows platform that we have with Keyword Organizer, it's much it's very very fast. So, okay. and that's something that you need when you're dealing with lots of data. So that's the reason that it was built on Windows. Um, the price is going to be twenty seven dollars. So we're going to be doing a sixty percent discount. Um, it usually sells. Um, it's sold anywhere from fifty to sixty dollars. Um, so, uh, or actually, it's been up to seventy dollars as well. So we're we're going to be offering it um, for a week for for twenty seven dollars. And um, yeah, I believe I believe that's it. You'll get access to all the features. It, it's just going to be there's no like light or pro version. You're going to get access to to the entire um, product. Now do, and up uh, and updates too. Uh -huh. It is um, uh, a diamond sale, or is this just kind of one price for? Seven nope, days? no, no, no dime sale. It's just going to be for seven days though. So it'll it, it'll be for seven days, and then it'll go back up to the normal retail price. Do you have a? Do you want to talk about some of the OTOs that you have? Sure. So the the, the first OTO is uh, it's it is a keyword research um, tool. So it, it it integrates seamlessly with Keyword Organizer, which is great. So you can do keyword research, and then you can take all the research that you've done, and you can compile it into Keyword Organizer. So it's similar to you know Market Samurai, a Longtail Pro, uh, you know all those tools out there. But um, it, it integrates very nicely with Keyword Organizer, so that's the first OTO. And then we also have some some training as well as OTO two. Um, we'll teach people kind of the methods and the theory behind um, some of the some of the tough stuff that we've talked about already. Just um, doing proper keyword research, how to target keywords the proper way. We go into a lot of detail there. So awesome awesome that's great I'm really looking uh, forward to this tool and uh, for those who are with us uh, right now make sure you stay tuned watch the demo video so you know exactly how this thing works and how how really gonna benefit you uh, when it comes to you know it's really really hard digging to you know thousands of keywords trying to find that you know one or two or ten or 20 keywords you really want to go really spend your time on so I, I think this two are going to really simplify your life really going to take your keyword research literally uh, from the amateur level to the expert level so um, yeah Mark thank you so much for spending your time uh, with us right before the lunch and how busy you are and uh, I'm, I'm personally uh, looking forward to uh, use this software myself and uh, and uh, for those who are listening uh, looking out for my email tomorrow and my bonuses tomorrow as well and uh, Mark, thank you again for uh, coming on here. And do you have any final words before we, we go here? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the tool's great, guys. I mean, it's been it's been like eight years of pain and suffering, you know, because for, for if you work with clients or you do keyword research, this, this tool will make just a world of a difference and save you so much time instead of having to manually maneuver things in Excel um, spreadsheets. I mean, God, I, I used to do that for a number of years I did until I started using this tool. So <laughs> I, I'm sure everyone can relate who's done keyword research. So definitely go pick it up while it's on a, a nice discount. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. And I'm looking for your next one as well. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So I have a new client and they need a website for their car-free diet video product. So I go to the trusty Google keyword tool and grab a few hundred keywords. Car-free, low-carb diet. Now I save the CSV file to my hard drive and start a keyword organizer. I create a new project and drag my file into the import box. Okay, I just filled up my gray list with lots of keywords. Let's see what we got. I can right-click on the global monthly search volume and sort from high to low. Let's see. The Atkins diet is a competitor of my client's product. So let's put the keyword Atkins on the negative keyword list. So now in the future, when I bring in new keywords, my project will blacklist the phrases that contain the word Atkins. 
I can check out the blacklist by clicking on the black swatch in the corner. But for now, let's go back to the gray list and let's search for some words we can use on our website. I'll type in the word card in the keyword filter box and maybe sort by the ad group column. Let's see, low carb diet for vegetarians. That would make a good article topic. So I open my article tree and make a new category for vegetarians. My new article will encompass all five of these keywords, so I select them all and click Derive. So the keywords have been associated with my new article and move to the whitelist. I can see the whitelist if I click the white swatch here. See? And now, let's create some SEO optimized content. So I expand my content panel and fix up my title a bit. Low carb diet. I can also set a publication date and type a meta description. Okay, let's create some content. Now I can look at my content tree and see which keywords I still need in my article. If the keyword is black, that means I haven't used it in my content yet. So let's add the word plan to my article. Green keywords mean that the entire phrase was found in the content. I want to make sure to include all of this top one here, because it has a lot of searches per month. I can press Ctrl C on my keyboard and paste the phrase into my article. See, now the phrase is green. If I hold my mouse down over the keywords, then their location in the article content will highlight. Later, I should probably have a look around and find some more keywords for this content. But this is just a demo, so let's repeat our steps and create four more articles. Okay, you can see my website's content strategy is starting to take shape. We've got five keyword optimized articles about topics that reflect what people are actually searching for on the internet. Now, let's say we're ready to go live. I can export my articles to a CSV file, so if I use a CSV importer plugin in WordPress, then I can import my content right into my WordPress database. And that's it! My content is online. Hi everyone, we're going to take a minute to go over how Keyword Organizer can help you do basic SEO. So if you get down to the most basic level, doing on-site SEO might come down to just four steps. You gather a large list of keywords, select keywords for your website, assign these keywords to articles, and write the articles using these keywords. So let's get into a little more detail. In step one, you gather a large list of keywords, and this usually means using the Google Keyword Tool and downloading a whole bunch of CSV files to your computer. Typically, you'll use some sort of program like Microsoft Excel to sort these keywords into a format that you can work with. And then in step two, you have to basically go through all these keywords and try to determine if the keyword phrase makes sense for the website you're building. And typically you'll have some sort of whitelist and blacklist marker. And if you put a little check mark in the whitelist box, then this means that you want to use the keyword phrase on your website somewhere. And if you tick the blacklist marker, then this means that the keyword doesn't belong on your website at all. So after you get done with this step, at least you have a pretty good idea of which keywords you're going to be targeting on your website. And then in step three, you try to cluster your keywords into distinct article groups. So you usually create some article titles and you'll somehow assign the relevant keywords to an appropriate article. And then when that's all done, you actually write the article and you try to make sure that you use your keyword phrases in the actual article content. So in other words, you're making a so-called SEO optimized document. You're making a document that is reflective of this batch of keywords that you've assigned to the article topic. Okay, so that's basic SEO in a nutshell. Now, how does Keyword Organizer help you with this process? Well, this isn't a complete training video, but let's just briefly walk through the four steps again. And we'll try to illustrate how you might approach the task using Keyword Organizer. So in the first step, you gather a large list of keywords, and this step typically starts off at the Google Keyword Tool, where you'll type in root keywords that are reflective of the topics you want to cover on your website. So in the example, I was doing a carb-free diet website, and so I start off by typing in low-carb diet in the Google Keyword Tool, and I just save a CSV file to my hard drive. Normally, I'd want to go back and keep typing in creative keyword phrases into uh, the Google Keyword Tool, phrases that I think would yield some unique keywords. But for this video, let's just say I was satisfied with the few hundred keywords I got on the first run here. And so I download my CSV files from the Google Keyword Tool and I import them into Keyword Organizer. And then I've completed step one. I've gathered a list of keywords that I can work with. And some of these keywords will ultimately be placed in my web content somewhere. 
In step two, I've got to choose which keywords I want and which ones I don't want on my website. So I have to whitelist some keywords and blacklist some keywords. Now, the way that Keyword Organizer approaches this problem is when you first bring in new keywords, it just puts all the new keywords onto what I call the gray list. So when a keyword is on the gray list, that just means that you haven't decided what you want to do with it yet. So you can see here are all the keywords I just imported and I can just go through and click the little white swatch here and that tells Keyword Organizer that this keyword is on the white list. If I click the black swatch, then the keyword is on the black list. The gray swatch just means the keyword is on the gray list. So there's a lot of value in this little function because it gives you a really easy way to separate the wheat from the chaff, as they say, to separate the good keywords from the bad keywords. And then when you finally have your good keywords on your whitelist, then Keyword Organizer allows you to create categories and create new articles in these categories. And then you can assign the keywords to the articles by simply dragging the keyword into the article. You can see after I do a drag and drop how the keyword has become associated with the article title. And once you kind of have your website laid out, what they call laying out a content strategy, then it's time to actually create your content. This is step four on the list. So that's what this third panel on Keyword Organizer does. So it has a basic text editor, and you notice that as you create your text, your content, the keywords that are associated with this article content will change color. Black means that the keyword phrase hasn't been used in the article yet. Orange means that portions of the keyword phrase are in the article and green means that the whole word is in the article. And also if you hold your mouse down on one of the keywords then the keywords position in your article content will highlight. So you can see how this is really very useful when creating content because Keyword Organizer is constantly watching the document as you type and it will tell you if you've used your keywords or not. So it does a pretty good job of helping you make what they call an SEO optimized document. A document where your target keywords are nicely scattered throughout the various document fields and after you've written all your articles then you're done. So if you use WordPress, then you just click the export button and export your articles to a CSV file and then bring everything into your WordPress install. And then you just click publish and your content is online. So this is about as easy as the SEO process can get. And Keyword Organizer was designed from the ground up with this entire SEO process in mind. So my hope is it will become a very useful tool in your SEO toolbox and allow you to ultimately make websites that are Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how you might import a list of keywords into Keyword Organizer. Now, there are hundreds of keyword discovery apps out there. My other app, Keyword Researcher, is one of these. It's a keyword discovery application, meaning that basically you provide the app with some sort of input and it will generate a list of keyword suggestions for you. Preferably, you'll use it to find these nice, low competition, long tail keyword phrases that uh, the Google Keyword Tool often misses. So we're just going to go really quickly here and I'm going to start up Keyword Researcher and run the query how asterisk camera. We'll just search from A through H and see what we get. Okay, so we got about 70 keyword phrases and let's suppose we're building a camera website and so we'd want to import these phrases into Keyword Organizer. So this is pretty simple. The first thing I want to do is just place these keywords into my Windows clipboard. So I might just select all, right click on the keywords and then just click copy. And then let's go to the Google Keyword Tool to get some data for these keywords. So first I'm going to want to log in. You always want to log in when you use the Google Keyword Tool. And next, if I'm going to be getting a list of keywords, I'm going to want to select this checkbox here that says, only show ideas closely related to my search terms. Now the reason I do this is because if you don't select this option, then the Keyword Tool will look at your input as more as a kind of suggestion about what data it should retrieve. In other words, it will use a very loose searching algorithm and try to dig up a plethora of broad ideas that might reflect your input and keywords here. But when you do select this checkbox, then you're asking it to mostly try to return just the data that pertains to your exact inputted request. So whenever you're entering a long list of keywords like this, you should usually check this box. Now I'm also going to click exact data here at the bottom left. And finally, I'll just right click on the text box and paste in my keywords. Now let's click search and let's download our CSV file. Okay, now let's start up Keyword Organizer. We'll start a new blank project, select the import export menu and import our new CSV file. And that's it, here are the keywords and their data. So we were able to transfer a list of keywords from Keyword Researcher to Keyword Organizer and we even managed to get lots of Google Keyword Tool data to come with it. So if you're watching this video, then chances are you've probably spent a bit of time with the Google Keyword Tool and you've probably downloaded some CSV files and maybe opened them up in Microsoft Excel. 
And maybe you've tried to plan out a content strategy or even just needed to determine which keywords you'd like to use in a particular document on your website. So Microsoft Excel is pretty good for that. I've been using Excel since I was a little kid. I use it every day still. So, But you've probably realized that as your website gets bigger, as you start adding keywords and content to your website, then working with keywords in Excel gets a bit difficult pretty fast. So a major inspiration behind the construction of Keyword Organizer was to finally give people a way to have a real desktop database application that allows them to really get control of their CSV files, to finally create a robust solution for managing thousands of keywords on your website. So as with any database tool where you have lots of data, there's a pretty difficult set of functions you're going to need. And so when I was designing Keyword Organizer, I made a list of things that I was personally looking for in an SEO tool at the time. And here's what I came up with. So first of all, it has to be really easy to import data, particularly the data from the Google Keyword Tool CSV files. Since Google's tool is so foundational to SEO, and those CSV files are kind of the bread and butter of the daily SEO grind. So it has to be easy to bring those in. Second, easy to search within the data. And third, easy to filter the data. Now by filtering here, I mean when you create a filtered view, like when you only want to see keywords that have a search volume greater than 1,000 searches per month, for example. So it has to be easy to filter out some of the keywords by some criteria you specify. And number four, the last one, it has to be easy to export the data. Like I mentioned before, I love Microsoft Excel. And for some things, it's just really convenient to just have this simple white grid to lay out all your data. It's still really useful. And so exporting data to an XLS file is a pretty important feature. So, okay, so those were my goals when designing the keyword grid. Now let's take a look and see how Keyword Organizer handles these tasks. So in requirement one, it has to be easy to import data. So importing CSV files into Keyword Organizer is pretty simple. All you do is click import and then just drag the CSV files into the blue drop zone here. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's simple. In requirement two, it's, it's got to be easy to search within the data. So searching for keywords is pretty easy. All you do is go to the keyword column and type in the words you're looking for. So on our example diet website, if I was searching for high carb, then I just type high carb. And we can see Keyword Organizer will just list all the words that contain this phrase. Now, if I want to see all the keywords that contain the phrase high carb and the word diet, then I just put an uppercase and here and type high carb and diet. And you can see the words come up. So it's cool because you can enter logical expressions right here in the search box. And that makes finding keywords really easy. In requirement three, let's say we wanted to filter our data and show only the words that were searched for at least a uh, hundred times per month. So then I just type in greater than or equal to 100. And there they are. So you can see in this filtered view, we're just showing all the keywords in our project, which contain the word high carb and the word diet and haven't searched for greater than or equal to 100 times per month. It's easy. And of course, you can do this with all the columns. Now, in the last requirement, requirement four, we need to be able to easily export our data. So you can export to a CSV file, of course. But a cool thing about Keyword Organizer is that you can export to a native XLS format, meaning that you can export your data directly to Microsoft Excel. So you don't have to bring in that ugly data from a CSV file where you have to change column sizes and fonts and stuff like that. What we've done is we've already formatted the Excel document for you. So you can export your data as a native XLS file and then open it up. And you have a nice, pretty formatted Excel document. One of the most important but overlooked items in laying out a content strategy is the negative keyword list or the blacklist. If you're not familiar with these terms, it simply refers to the list of words that you do not want on your website. So it might sound counterintuitive at first. I mean, why would you care about the words that you do not want on your website? But really, it's very important to maintain this list. What happens in the life of a website is you're continually importing new keywords, usually in the form of Google Keyword Tools CSV files or just text documents. So you always have this new data coming in. And so you don't want to get into a situation where you have to keep cleaning this new data where you're always removing the same keywords again and again and again. And so that's why we keep a blacklist in Keyword Organizer, because once you blacklist a keyword one time, then it will never bother you again. You don't have to look at it again if you don't want to. So as in the demo video, if we were making a low carb diet website and our competitor was the Atkins diet, then we could just click the black swatch next to the keyword. And this will immediately put the keyword phrase onto the blacklist. So if we want to get all of our keyword phrases that contain the word Atkins onto our blacklist, then we could just go down this list and select every one, 
or we could use what's called the negative keyword list. So the negative keyword list is just a list of words that should be immediately sent to the blacklist as soon as Keyword Organizer encounters them. So for example, I have the word Atkins written in my negative keyword list here. And so when I apply this list, then Keyword Organizer will look for any keyword phrase that contains this word, Atkins. And if it finds this word, it will simply send this keyword phrase to the blacklist. It will do the same thing when you import CSV files too. Any keyword phrase with the word Atkins will be sent to the blacklist. So how do you know which words to actually put in your negative keyword list? Well, you usually don't until you start working with your project. Your negative keyword list should evolve as your project evolves. What you'll find is as you're browsing through your list of keywords, then the words that do not belong on your website will start to pop out at you. And it's your job to get these words onto your negative keyword list so they don't bother you anymore. Now, fortunately, we've made this really easy in Keyword Organizer. For example, we can see the keyword phrase gluten-free diet here. Now, in the example carb-free diet website, we won't have much use for words about gluten-free dieting. So right away, I know that I want to add the word gluten to my negative keyword list. So this is pretty easy to do because when I right click my mouse over the actual word itself, then we can see that Keyword Organizer will determine which word in the phrase I just clicked. And it will ask me if I want to send this word, in this case the word gluten, to the negative keyword list. So I just click it and you can see that Keyword Organizer has just added this word to the top of my negative keyword list. So if I click apply, then Keyword Organizer will search for these words and we can see I just managed to blacklist two dozen gluten words on my project. It's that easy. So there's a lot of value in maintaining a negative keyword list and it becomes apparent really fast as soon as your project has merely a couple hundred keywords or so. Even if you only use Keyword Organizer for just this one task, then it's actually worth it because when you're doing keyword research, you're always working to try to prevent this sea of incoming data from distracting you from your goal of publishing the website itself. So hopefully in this video, we're going to talk about how Keyword Organizer works with WordPress particularly how Keyword Organizer is able to create a WordPress compatible document, a document that has all of the basic elements of a WordPress post. Now, of course, you don't have to use WordPress to use Keyword Organizer, but if you do use WordPress, then it's pretty cool because you'll be able to export your content directly into a WordPress install. So if you're watching this video, then you might already be familiar with content creation in WordPress. Basically, a WordPress post has five major elements. The title, this is just the title of your article, the permalink, that's the little bunch of text that makes up your URL. The publication date, that's the, the date you want your post to go live. The category, it's just the category you've made for the group of posts. The content, just the article itself. The excerpt, a lot of people don't use the excerpt, but they should. If you're not familiar with the excerpt, it's just this little white box where you insert a few lines of text. And in most WordPress themes, the, this text will be used to create your meta description. The meta description is just this little sequence of black characters that Google puts below the link on their search results page. So it's good to fill out uh, some appealing text here because you can hopefully write something there that you know the user is going to want and that lures them in to click on your website. Okay, so how does Keyword Organizer handle these elements? So this is pretty simple. When you start laying out your content plan in Keyword Organizer, you start off by simply making a, a new category. So these little green icons represent the categories in the software. And so we'll make a new one. And our, our demo website was about low carb diet. So let's just you know name our first category, uh, low carb dieting. And then to make a new article in the category, we'll just click on the little paper icon. And let's say we wanted to make an article about low carb snacks. So we'll just type a quick article title here to start off with. And so just real quick, at this point, we'd probably want to assign a few snack keywords to our article. And this process is described more in our other videos, but I'll just throw a few keywords in there, you know, that I would assume we'd want to eventually target in this content. Okay, and then we'll start making our content. So you can see this layout should be pretty familiar to you. On the top, we have this black text, and that is, of course, the title, which you can edit here as well. And then you'll notice this little green text, that's the permalink, and it's auto-generated using the same rules that WordPress uses. It makes the letters lowercase and replaces the spaces with hyphens, etc. So, of course, you can insert keywords here as well if you want to. The permalink is very important in SEO and you should generally surmise your article with just a few words. And then we have the publication date, which you can just click on and assign any date you want. 
And next to that, we have the WordPress excerpt. This usually becomes the meta description, uh, depending on your WordPress theme. And here you just type a couple lines that would kind of beckon a web surfer to click on your link as opposed to the other links in the Google search results page. So I worked really hard to try to make this interface as intuitive as absolutely possible. You may have noticed this layout here looks kind of familiar because this is pretty much the standard format that the search engines follow. See, you have the title, the URL, the date, and the meta description. I tried to follow the same formatting in Keyword Organizer. It's pretty similar. Okay, and then below all of this, we have the article content itself. Here you just type in any HTML you want. So at this point, as explained in the other videos, we, we want to just make sure that our keyword phrases are present in the elements of our article. And we can verify that by examining the color of the keyword phrase. Black means it's not there. Orange means just the word from the phrase is there. And green means that the entire keyword phrase is located in the article. So we'd want to make sure we get most of our keywords into our document in some form or another, and then we'd move on to the next article. So let's just speed up this process and repeat our steps real quick. Okay, so when our website is completely done and ready to go, we simply click the export to WordPress button and Keyword Organizer will generate a CSV file that WordPress can read with the CSV importer plugin. And that's it. So in this fashion, we can lay out a complete content strategy. We can create, organize, and publish the content of an entire SEO optimized website, all from one piece of software. Thank mm -hmm. you.